So here we are, we have our two lungs and the heart. I'm just gonna quickly label stuff. We've got our right and left lung, and we've got our heart. And I wanna make sure I label all the four chambers of the heart. I've taken away a lot of the vessels. I just wanna focus on a couple of things here. Mainly the, the blue blood vessel coming off of the heart, the one I've drawn in blue, which I'm gonna label here as the pulmonary artery. Remember, again, arteries go away from the lungs, so this is our pulmonary artery even though it's got deoxygenated blood in it, right? A little counterintuitive, but I think you got it now. So this is our pulmonary artery, and it's going to the left and right lungs. And if we assume that there's, let's say, five liters of blood kind of flowing through the heart per minute, that means that five liters are gonna go through this vessel. And some of that is gonna go to the right, and some is gonna go to the left. And you know, if I just, let's say I told you that two and a half liters goes to the left lung per minute, let's just assume that, then you know that the other half of that five liters, the rest of it, two and a half liters, must also go to the right because whatever goes into this tube, almost like a straw, uh, on one end has got to come out on the other end. So you just basically add up what's exiting and it's got to equal what's entering, right? So here we have the idea of flow, and we've talked about flow in other videos, but basically I just wanna restate it. It's a volume over a period of time, and in this case we're using liters over minutes, but really any kind of volume over time you could describe as blood flow. Now let's say that a, a tragic event occurs and I end up having a surgery to my lung, and let's say this lower lobe, let's say this underneath this yellow line is my lower lobe, and above it is my upper lobe, Let's say my lower lobe needs to be removed, right? It's a pretty, pretty drastic thing to have happen, but let's say this is what happens. What would, what would change in terms of my, my blood flow? Well, the thing that is gonna change is my resistance is gonna change, right? Before I had this surgery, let's think about it. Before I had this surgery, I had a certain amount of resistance in this blood vessel and also some resistance in this blood vessel. And let's say it's about the same, just to kind of make things easy. Let's say the resistance was about the same. So again, I had a surgery, and before they re and, you know, removed, removed the lower lobe, just to make sure we are clear on what the surgery was, so remove the lower lobe, and before the surgery, so before the surgery, all right, before up here, what was the resistance? Well, the resistance I was facing was, remember we have a branch here, so we have to add up the total resistance, you remember how to do this, total resistance, I'll call it R total, equaled uh, one divided by one over R, because we said that's what the resistance is right there, one over R plus one over R, and that second one is because of this guy. So we just kind of add it up, and I would say, okay, well that's equal to um, one over two divided by R, and I can flip the whole thing around, and I get R divided by two, or one half R. So this is my total resistance, one half R. It's a little counterintuitive, the fact that you actually have half of the resistance just because you have a fork, right? The fork in the road, meaning this fork right here, offers uh, you a chance to kind of go one of two ways, and as a result, the resistance falls in half. So after my surgery, what was my resistance? Well, in my surgery, this all kind of went away. This is now all gone, right? As my surgery removed the lower lobes, this is now gone. So what is my new R total? Well, if I had to calculate it again, I would say, okay, R total. In this case, it's actually really easy because it's just whatever's left, right? In this case, the total is gonna be just R. So really, my resistance went from half R to R. And so my resistance really, by removing the lower lobe, it doubled, my resistance went much higher, right? So this is the first interesting point, is that by having a uh, half a lobe removed, my resistance went way up. So on this side, my resistance after the surgery is much higher than it used to be. Now remember this flow, five liters a minute. Now you still have that much blood coming in, but now there's extra resistance on the left side. So what's the blood gonna do? Well, it's gonna say, well, why would I go that way when I can go this way? So more of the blood's gonna kinda go this way because there's more resistance on the left side. And so I can actually, you know, I don't know exactly what the amount of uh, flow would be, but I can kind of take uh, a guess and I would say, well, my guess is that the flow will be lower. So I'm actually just redo these numbers. I'm gonna give you new numbers 
and let's say the new flows, I'll write them in green, are going to be 3 liters a minute and 2 liters a minute. So they still have to add up to 5, of course, you know, that's, that's not changed, but you have more blood going to the right lung. So here let me introduce another word. So we've talked about flow, but now let me talk about perfusion. And sometimes people actually think they're the same thing. They, they sometimes will use them kind of synonymously. But really perfusion is volume over time. And so, so far you're thinking, well, it is about the same, right? But actually it's all divided by amount of tissue amount of tissue. And when I say amount, I could either be talking about a volume of tissue or a weight of tissue. So amount of tissue. And let's, just to kind of make this a little bit more concrete, I'm going to assume that I'm going to use 100 grams here. And that's often used. Not always. Sometimes you'll see other units. But I'm going to use 100 grams here. So let's now think about this entire scenario with the new numbers, 2 liters a minute and 3 liters a minute, in terms of perfusion. What would that mean? Well, let's say I weigh out my two lungs. And here, I only have an upper lobe on my left side left. So let's say that weighs half a kilogram, half a kilogram. And let's say on the right side, I've got uh, one kilogram. Let's say this is one kilogram. Uh, these are the weights of my two sides. And to figure out perfusion, then all you really are doing is taking the flow, because remember this whole chunk, this whole part right here is just flow, and dividing it by the amount of tissue. So I could figure out perfusion pretty easily. I could say, okay, well on the right side, let's do right side first. I've got three liters a minute. Uh, I'm going to write that as 3,000 milliliters, just to make it a little easier to see. 3,000 milliliters per minute, divided by, I said, one kilo, which is the same as 1,000 grams. So what does that turn out to be? If I'm going to use 100 grams as my denominator, I could say, well, that's, uh, let's say, zeros cancel. So I've got 300, 300 milliliters per minute per 100 grams of lung tissue, right? And so this is for the right side. And I could do the same thing for the left side. I could say, well, what would it be for the left side? It would be uh, I've got 2,000 2, milliliters, right? We said 2 liters. And, of course, the 2 and 3, I was just kind of estimating, but uh, you'd have to actually measure to see what the actual flow is. But here I've got 500 grams, and so that works out to 400, 400 milliliters per minute per 100 grams. So what I wanted to show you is an interesting thing, which is that you can actually have on the one side, you know, if I said which side, the right or the left, after my surgery, which side has more uh, blood flow, well then this side has more blood flow, right? The right side has more flow. But if I said which one has more perfusion, more perfusion, well it turns out that actually that left upper lobe is actually getting more perfusion. So just because one side has more flow doesn't necessarily mean that it has more perfusion. Oftentimes that is the case because you can see how closely flow and perfusion are related, but it just depends on, on you know, exactly what the weight is for the tissue. Kind of a classic example of this I'm going to write out over here um, that you might hear people talk about sometimes is if you say this side is high and this side is low, let's do flow and perfusion, they'll say, well, if you have flow and you're trying to talk about different organs, one of the organs with the, with the highest flow in the body would actually be your liver. This is, let's say, your liver, right? This is your liver. And then with a little bit less blood flow would be your kidneys, right? This would be your kidneys, let's say. Um, I'll write K for kidney, or actually, I guess I'll spell it out. I have enough space. And then something that has almost no flow relative to the other two would be bones. And actually, compared to this, if you were to uh, now talk about perfusion, it would actually look slightly different. So for perfusion, using these same three organs, if I was to kind of rank them based on which one gets the most perfusion or blood perfusion, the kidney actually does the best. So here, you have to take a certain amount of tissue, and it's got to be the same amount. So I'm just imagining if I took a little chunk of kidney tissue, and if I did the exact same thing and took a little chunk of liver tissue, 
And this is kind of the way to think about it is that if you want to balance things out, you've got to take the exact same amount of tissue. In this case, it would be 100 grams, let's say. May maybe these boxes are 100 grams of tissue. It would be something like this, and this would be the bone. So the liver ends up not doing as well, right? It gets a little bit less perfusion in terms of 100 grams. The kidney does a little bit better when it comes to perfusion. And the bones, the sad little bones, they actually don't get much blood flow. And even if you do it by 100 grams of tissue, they actually don't get much uh, perfusion either. So this is kind of another way to think about it. And you might hear these examples. So I wanted to give them to you here.